There's such a dark magic moment where Ray just whispers in absolute desperation. He's just like, please, please don't mention Banana Man. And Lawrence is like, oh, I, sh- I should bring up the Banana Man thing. And he's like, if you want to. You <laughs> I've never been more empathetic to Ray when he's just like, stupid Ray. Didn't even, Didn't even know about the banana thing. Don't say banana, man. Don't say banana. Am I talking out? Banana man! God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, because if this became a hex a monthly five-hour history show, you'd probably notice. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. So, uh, you know who's actually smart, if you really think about it? Who's that? Stupid people. Oh! <laughs> right on. You know what's actually a good movie? This movie. Yeah, if you think about it. All right. I'm, you, I, we've got 90 minutes. You can still convince me. This is, this is interesting. <laughs> they're going to they're gonna get philosophical about opposite day. Oh, okay. <laughs> and sitting 900 miles to my northeast is, of course, my bad friend Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm amazing, Noah. You know, before this week's movie, I thought my life was a series of embarrassments. Uh, and more and more humiliating circumstances. But I realized that I have been winning the battle of ideas more and more each year. Oh, and okay. You taught me that. <laughs> yeah. So, but it's a positive <laughs> twist on all things. Okay. So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched The Fool. It's the story of Ray Comfort trying so hard. To get fucked by Pendulette with a banana and getting her knife. <laughs> and, then, and then accidentally making a movie about that. Like, Ray thinks this movie is about God or something. It's not. It's about him being in denial about getting denied by Pendulette. Like, just just get fucked with bananas. That that sounds great. Just be yourself. Saying, you know? If you take one thing away from this, Ray, and we know you're listening, it's that you should fuck yourself with a banana. <laughs> be free, Ray. And want you to be happy. <laughs> Let's do it. Just try it, it once. Send us the video. We'll put, if you didn't like it, you didn't like it. That's right. All right. So Eli. And there's no God. Right. Well, <laughs> Jesus would forgive you anyway, so it doesn't matter. So Eli. That's why we have hexagonal assholes. <laughs> <laughs> so Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if one time at a water park, your friend slid down a slide, kicked you in the stomach, causing you to shit yourself and vomit simultaneously, but you'd like that to be a huge win, you <laughs> will love... Heath, you're going to love this movie, is what I'm saying. <laughs> I, I enjoyed it very much. Honestly, I enjoyed the fuck out of this movie. It was this was so great. sad and dark, yes. but it's Ray who's sad, and it's the best. Oh. It was so honestly, it was like Ray sent us an email and was like, hey, guys, if you ever feel like guilty or sad because I, I probably have some kind of mental illness. N- nope. No, nope. I am. I am 100 <laughs> percent confident that everything you do to me, I'm going to send you a picture of me hitting my nuts with a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. <laughs> no, I, I should note here that we actually had the opportunity to be present at the <gasps> world YouTube premiere of this movie, uh, but we chose not to because fuck Ray Comfort up his banana holster, as I said in last week's diatribe. If if you want the whole, uh, the whole story there, by the way, listen to the diatribe from episode 323 of The Scathing Atheist. We can tell you why we weren't there, but we, we had an opportunity, but it would require being in the same room with Ray uh-huh. Comfort, and that disgusts two of us and violates restraining orders for the third. And I didn't think he meant it. <laughs> We missed out on those Dixie cups of banana split. Yeah. <laughs> that was sad. Hey, can you give me this on a, with a cup with a flat bottom? No, that's why I went, okay, all right, never mind. Also, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you said this already in the scathing episode, but like the alternate was we had to leave American Atheist Convention. We had to stop seeing you to go hang out with Ray. Yeah. So that he could take a 34 second selfie and we could be like, we don't like you and you're causing gay teens to kill yourself. Whatever. I don't care. And then we just go yep. off on our own fucking directions. Then I'm just watching a movie in a rec room. Yeah. <laughs> and this movie, no less, 
Yeah. All right. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yes, I would. Um, best worst <laughs> dictionary based uh, redemption. Yeah. He gets one right before it's, it's all over. So, oh. so Ray Comfort's reason for making this movie was embarrassment over not knowing a word from the dictionary. We'll get to the details. And and then he had the greatest moment of his life after that when he did know a word from the yes, dictionary yes. and its etymology and an atheist didn't. And he made an entire movie <laughs> to go in between those two life events just to tell this story about later knowing a word. Wow. It's the best. Ray, that's great. You know a word. Just whatever you do, don't keep in the end where your opponent who didn't know what the words origins meant accepts your definition and congratulates you and changes their mind. Just don't show that in your movie. Yeah. And you'll and be you'll, fine. And you'll be <laughs> just show oh, Whoops. I kept it. Whoops. All right. So this honestly could just be like, if I, if I needed to do a best worst for this movie or best worst for Ray Comfort's life, I feel like I would do the same best worst. I, I, I'm going to go best worst lesson learned. Right. Like, so uh, imagine that you have a, a table that's exactly like nut height. And, and you accidentally whack yourself in the balls if you come around the corner too quick. Ray's takeaway from that might as well be that you should just rip your testicles off before you go into the dining room. <laughs> That's how thoroughly he misses the fucking point. Or that your nuts are better for the whacking. It's unclear. <laughs> I'm going to go with, and get a little controversial here, best worst knowledge of atheism. It's... <laughs> You know when your grandma buys you a CD for Christmas and you have you, your computer hasn't had a CD player for 12 years, <laughs> but it's that Eminem, and it's like the Eminem cartoons singing Christmas carols, but she heard you liked Eminem, the rapper. <laughs> that is the knowledge of atheism that Ray demonstrates through this movie. Give me a five and a quarter floppy disk. With video game. <laughs> I know you like them video games. All right. Well, it's been too long since we got our comfort fix, so we'll keep the break brief. And when we come back, we'll slip into all the revisionist history of The Fool. Heath? Uh, Heath Enright? Oh, hey, Dr. J. Yeah, not really a doctor. I'm a dentist, but you can call me that. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, but you, like, went to medical school. I went to school. So, so what seems to be the problem? Well, I want to take care of my teeth better. But it's so expensive. Plus, you know, who has the time? Well, why don't you try Quip? Oh, okay. Um, nothing but the tooth, please. No, no, no. Quip, right? the, the smart right? way to brush. Okay, yeah. Sorry, I didn't have a lot of time on that. Um, for the record, Eli just wrote a blank in the script. That was Yeah, like, oh, yeah. Quip, so Quip has a built-in two-minute timer that pulses every 30 seconds to remind you when to switch sides. Plus, brush heads are delivered on a dentist-recommended schedule every three months for just $5. Wow. That's actually a great deal. Yeah, I love Quip because the included multi-use cover works as a stand and makes traveling with my toothbrush a breeze. That's why I love Quip and why over a million happy, healthy mouths do too. Okay, so how do I get started? Well, Quip starts at just $25. And if you go to getquip.com slash awful right now, you can get your first refill pack for free. That's your first refill pack free at G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash awful. All right, I'm sold. Now, let's say you just lean back and I perform minor surgery on your bones that hasn't changed for 50 years. The best medicine hasn't changed for 50 years? That's right. Great. Hi, I'm Ray Comfort. You know, we've had a lot of fun here today on Gosh Awful Movies. Jesus, oh, Ray. Fucks. But of course, the point stands that through all the mockery, I've spoken to the world's most famous atheists. There's like two guys. There's cutting-edge author who everyone still likes, Richard Dawkins. Really? Popular YouTuber, Thunderfoot. And, of course, king of the atheists himself, Lawrence Krauss. I what? poke. None of those people. Nope. But why stop there? In The Fool 2, I'll be speaking to the brand new generation of atheists whose ideas have been sweeping the nation. For example, Bertrand Russell. Dead guy. And the one and only Aristotle. Uh, super dead guy. Not an atheist. I'm Ray Comfort, and I know as much about the atheist movement as your grandmother does your music taste. Correct. Carl Sagan. Still dead. Also, also dead. dead yeah. one. Do you think he would have been nice to me? No. 
No. And we're back for the breakdown. And we're going to start this one off drawing a jester's hat on Ray Comfort. I'd have gone further. <laughs> Give me the pencil. <laughs> yeah. And we get a uh, title card that says, like, comment, share, subscribe. That's the first thing. In the <laughs> like in the like. movies. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like all great works of philosophy. Yes. Smash that like button. <laughs> Aristotle. Everyone shares this with four friends. And then those four friends share it with four friends and so on. Uh, Jesus. Ray Comfort is, is still a giant failure. Yeah. But. Yeah, exactly. And But hey, at least he's being upfront about it, right? Like right away, the picture of Ray Comfort comes up. And they label it like a buffoon, idiot, fool, jester, et cetera. And I'm like, okay, all right. We're starting on the right note here. (laughs) And he looks like such an asshole. And I don't mean like a shitty person. He is a shitty person. But he looks like a literal balloon nut. Like his face (laughs) is like caved in. Like It's like it's being sucked into a straw that's behind his head. You know what I mean? Like right behind (laughs) his nose. No, it's, yeah. Yeah, I'm not saying does. the appropriate punishment for Ray's homophobia and transphobia is for him to look more and more like a monkey in each movie we see him in. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not not saying that. No, oh. I mean, that would explain a lot of the evidence. It's a good theory. All right. He's like right in the middle of the evolution chart. Like, yeah. absolutely he's right in the middle guy. Yeah. Tyler, Tyler, come look at this. Come on. Come on. He looks in the mirror every morning and he's like, why are there still monkeys? Come on. <laughs> I'm nailing this. Yeah. Sarah thought it was hilarious. All right. <laughs> so we open the movie at AA Con 2001 in Orlando. This is where Ray Comfort squeegeed the ass cheeks of Ron Barrier in a debate. Yeah. The uh, theme that year was uh, gloating. <laughs> <laughs> And he, he, Ray doesn't even understand. He's just like, how the fuck did I get invited to this thing? Like, I don't get invited places. I, I once crashed a timeshare presentation. <laughs> <Nobody likes that. laughs> well, but the funny thing is like, uh, the, okay, the real answer of how he got invited is that we knew he was the most likely person to look stupid in front of a bunch of atheists in all of Christianity. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's the, the moment of pride he's taking here. And also, by the way, he steals his interstitial shot from Donkey Kong Country. And that kind of pissed me off the whole time. I he wanted does. to jump in a barrel a really, really bad here. Oh, uh, dies on the water. Uh, the, the banana wipes. Yeah, yeah. The banana, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He banana wipes every scene. It's the best. I was like kind of happy with them by the end of it. I kind of liked them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but so he talks about this debate and he's like, but then Ron Barrier was such a coward. He pulled out, but but then he put it back in and then he pulled out again and then he put it back in. At the end, he was in, though, and we had the debate. And why, <laughs> do, Ray, do not tell this part of the story because Ron sends out this super sweet email being like, hey, everybody, this guy is an idiot and I don't feel like embarrassing him. I don't feel like stooping down to this level. Let's just call this off. And he was like, keyword. And Ron yeah, was like, fine. Yes, All yes. right, man. Uh, All right. If I'll, you want, you, if I'll you hold insist. fingers behind my back and you'll fail to guess a number less than five. <laughs> <laughs> it's 2001. It's our convention. I'm just giving you. This is the worst year. <laughs> All right, so then we back up a couple. The chronology in this goddamn movie is insanity. Um, it's just as shit occurs to him. He's like, oh, oh, and this was in 1989. Um, so now we're in 1989 in Christchurch, New Zealand, where he got his start as guy yelling at people in the streets about Jesus. Yep. Guy who took advantage of the yelling people place so often and in such an irritating way that eventually a church walked up to him and was like, hey, you know, we pay people to do that, right? Do you want to do that (laughs) (laughs) professionally? Yeah. And this is where he decides to move to Los Angeles, right? Yeah. He's like yelling people, (laughs) yelling at people like I'm crazy. I'll go for way better in America. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, (laughs) we see um, a one page (laughs) newspaper from like some terrible local source. And this is the exact quote about Ray Comfort moving to the U.S. It says, Mr. Comfort will approach the city fathers of Los Angeles with two, quote, very good letters of commendation from New Zealand civil authorities. Whoa. <laughs> Continuing, firm backing also comes from his friendly foe, the wizard. What? And that's the end of the quote. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually, he sheds best. a little light on that, but boy, do I love it with no context. <laughs> oh. <laughs> if that's like the, the newspaper's way of saying God's on his side. 
<laughs> yeah. And by the way, when he sheds light on it, he's like, this is the wizard. End of thought. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, he he also disagreed with me. His mental illness didn't stretch far enough Slightly to different. agreeing with me. But it, it did stretch to calling himself the wizard. <laughs> it's, it's weird that there's a lie. I didn't figure there would be a line between those I, two. I call myself Banana Man. I <laughs> he's crazier. All right. Speaking of which, uh, this is where he introduces his banana routine, which it, he, for whatever reason, he thinks it's very important that we know this is normally preceded by a bit about a Coke can. Right. As though like he seems again, completely misses the point, just keeps hitting his nuts on that table and shit. He seems to think the reason we're making fun of the banana video is that we don't get the context of it. Yeah, he is the racist guy explaining the racist joke of theology. He's like, no, 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 no. yes, because the black guy would be committing the crime. <laughs> is why you call him the, because they commit crime. Why are you all not laughing? I heard this. I almost shat myself. All right, fine. I'm sorry, Barack. Get back to your speech. Whatever. <laughs> Ruined my joke. Uh, he, he, oh, I'm sorry. Before he leaves New Zealand, he also introduces us to his evidence Bible. Right. Apparently oh, he had some like scribblings right. that he was keeping in the front of his Bible. And he's like, ha, ah, I figured out the answers to all of the questions. Um, I should publish these along with the Bible. And his <laughs> publisher loved that idea. Uh, oh. also, I, I don't want to call forward or anything, but we should 100% do the evidence Bible. If the Kindle preview is anything like the rest of it, it is <laughs> nothing but solid gold okay oh, all right it's nonsense i paused on the one page of his stupid notes that he shows us uh, his handwritten notes at the front of his bible oh that boy that, that looked like the, it looked like the fucking uh, the notebooks in seven or something you oh, read that oh, it, 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 he's absolutely a serial killer on top of everything <laughs> explained today no question but one of the things one of the notes in this thing it says like it's like he's doing like a, his flow chart of like how to harass strangers on the street better. And one of the things says, note to self, open rebuke better. So like <laughs> he was just being like, you're evil. And then like, all right, note to self, maybe try. Tone. I don't know. All right. Who's got two thumbs and isn't evil? Me. All right. <laughs> oh, looks like you don't have two thumbs. <laughs> Power of Christ compels you. I'm workshopping this. <laughs> Feel free to go. Did you like that rebuke? <laughs> at the end. Seven. Okay. All right. So then, okay, so we cut back to the debate in Orlando now that we've established that he used to scream at people, but he's really nervous about doing his Coke can and banana bit in front of a room full of atheists that would understand how stupid it was. Yeah, and he's saying that, like, the... Coke can got erased by atheists sometimes when we like made fun of him, right? I'm like, I'm so curious at this point, like how the Coke can gets used, considering like the banana gets a hege and a beach. Like, what was he doing with the can? I wonder. Yeah, I, w I will say I would have been way more impressed with a banana video if I'd realized there was a Coke can up there the whole time. He just. <laughs> well, and. Again, this is the core of the movie, right? Is yes. that Ray doesn't understand why people laugh at the banana thing, right? People aren't laughing at the banana thing because you're pointing a dick-shaped thing at your face. That's a bonus. That is a bonus. The, pe the reason why we're laughing at you, Ray, is because you think this is a good argument, right? And if you didn't think it was a good argument... You wouldn't present it. I, I know you think that it also involves silly business where you like turn to the banana and go like, look, it's got a cap and everything. And you think that's like, you know, Richard Pryor, 1978. I get that. But they're not laughing because like you misplayed the cap bit. Yeah, well, I, I was laughing because he suggested that a banana can come in your face. Well, that's yeah, right. Like what fruit squirts in your face? Right. Well, well, that's the thing, though. The two, the, the two things we're laughing at are both things that he doesn't get. One, the dick stuff. Right. He seems to honestly not realize that it's the dick stuff primarily driving this. And two, yeah, he keeps saying, well, like without the Coke can and the live audience laughing along, you think I'm serious with this argument. But you are serious with the argument. Right. Like right. when you present an argument, but your dog's wearing sunglasses in the background, you're still being silly, but you wouldn't present the fucking argument if you didn't think it was a usable argument. It wouldn't make sense as a joke. 
if it wasn't a usable argument in your mind. The argument itself is stupid, and he continuously misses this point, no matter how it's broken down for him over and over again, table to the nuts. Yeah, no matter <laughs> how many various examples he sees of people making fun of the argument. Yeah. And then puts in this movie. Right. Part of the argument is like, all right, well, this is a well-made banana. So, I mean, you're saying God makes shitty ones sometimes to yeah, fuck with right, us. Yeah, right. Clearly. Clearly, yeah. And then he refers to the sides of the banana as the close side and the far side. And he turns like, them around so they're both closer to him when he when he labels them that. Yes. <laughs> Someone raises their hand. What if the banana is in space in a vacuum? Get the fuck what out of here. What if it's here. rotating? The, yeah, exactly. serious. Have you, have you accounted serious for conversation. dust? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to disprove atheism here. What are you going <laughs> to jerk off a banana in space? You don't make any sense right now. You sound dumb. You're dumb. Christians be jerking off a banana like this. <laughs> but white people be jerking off a banana like this. So women be shopping. But no, but okay, but see, here's the thing though is he tried the, the the whole point of the movie is first of all for him to miss the point of what we're laughing at, but also to say that he was trying to get us to laugh the whole time, right? That was what he was going for. He was going for dick joke or something. But and and so we go back to him doing it at the um at the atheist convention and yeah, sure there's a couple of laughs there, but they're, you know, those cynical I can't believe that's actually his argument laughs, right? Because yeah. yeah. we atheists don't appreciate highbrow humor, I guess. Ray, if you hear laughter and have sense memory of all the times your mom told you someone was laughing with you, they're not, Ray. No. They're not. No. <laughs> yeah, well, but no, but he does cut back to a uh, a video of him killing with this bit, though, right? Like in England, he's in, in England somewhere, and this bit is like rivaling a laugh track. Right. Oh, pe people are going nuts. Just like, bananas <laughs> I'm shitting myself right now. I'm shitting. I'm shitting. I'm a Christian. This is funny. Yeah. <laughs> and also, okay, so I didn't, so we've pointed out before one of the hilariously stupid things about this video is that he opens his bananas backwards, right? Like, if you open the banana by the stem, you're, you're going to squish your fucking banana. If you open it by the other end, it's just as easy to open. You have a little more to hold on to at the end of the banana and you don't squish it as you try to open it. I thought he didn't know that that's how all the monkeys ate there, but you know, he knows that he's seen it done and he still doesn't realize that's the <laughs> correct way to eat a banana. Nope. And <laughs> this is one of my favorite parts. He says the banana peel clearly has four perforations yes. perfect for tearing it. And we're, I'm looking at it. I can see with my eyes that you only tore three tears. You didn't even get <laughs> the four per perforations that God intended you to get. He tries so to peel two of them apart into a fourth perforation at one point, but this, he misses. Uh, this <laughs> one's amazing. a little tougher than the others. Right. <laughs> I'm going to rewrap this banana in a second because I'm a fucking crazy person. <laughs> He wraps it. He say, he's saving that banana for lunch or yeah. for the next day. Like he clearly tapes it back up. He yeah. tries to, he literally just, and Matt, you, exactly what you're picturing, podcast listener. He just sort of schlumps the peel of the banana back onto the banana, watches it fall back down, and you see the schizophrenia <laughs> delete that image from his eyes, and he just puts it down on the table. He did it. Good job, Ray. Sealed against germs and oxygen. Yeah. There, yeah. <laughs> It's amazing. And yeah, his his point, he's doing this like he's jerking it off and doing all these accidental, I think, sexual maneuvers on it. And he's saying like it's perfect fit for human insertion, hand, mouth, whatever. And I wanted somebody to jump up and be like, behold the pineapple, Ray Comfort's nightmare. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Or the coconut or any number. Yeah, right. Okay. So All now, the things, the objects that don't fit into your mouth and ask correctly. Yeah, yes, that are food products or potential dildos. Yes, exactly. <laughs> All right, so now it's time to, speaking of dildos, it's time to get Kirk Cameron in on the action. Um, <laughs> he's like, and then in 2001, famous actor Kirk Cameron, like, you know, formerly famous actor Kirk Cameron, combined his ministries with mine. And that's when they filmed the infamous banana video. Oh, and I love that he's like, yeah, so 
Kirk made me say that he he actually said, "Hey, that's that's fucking stupid." Before we started filming, <laughs> but I I cried for an hour and a half. So he uh, he let me he let me do it. Do it. <laughs> it's gonna be uh, some growing pains on his ass, but that's. <laughs> And then we actually we have a very quick clip of Kirk Cameron going talking about how he used to be a his words devout atheist went to not church every single Sunday damn it and Wednesday Didn't believe so hard <laughs> so, and then Ray Comfort dives into his banana bit and tells us how bananas won't squirt in your face and I'm like yeah that's what they always say this is like the ninth. Banana Man video we've seen. We're like five minutes into the movie now. This is like yeah. nine of these things. It's like his bar mitzvah video. We're just like saying, <laughs> so dumb. Yeah, usually they get the chronology better in those ones, but yeah. yeah. And again, he couldn't get the four way tear in nope. his TV. He could. This is cut. This was made for TV. He couldn't get one take where he tore a banana four ways in or four or just like said three perforations for a change. Yeah. But I'm sorry, speaking of bad chronology, we were just in 2001. We have, they, they keeps coming up and telling us what year, year we're in. Out of 2001, he says, and then three years later, and the fucking thing comes up and says 2006. Is this a Trinity <laughs> thing? Yeah, anyway, yeah, he says three years later after 2001, it was 2006. And by then, his TV show was airing in 170 countries. His award winning award winning show yes. was uh, <laughs> renewed for a third season by ourselves. What? Yeah. You say by yourselves? <laughs> after yeah, seven right. years, after seven years, they got to their third season. <laughs> and do you, would you like to know who gave them that award? Who's it? Was it themselves? It was them. It was them. Okay, yep. yeah, it was like oh, yes. <laughs> It's like best Christian podcast with a child actor from the eighties in the U.S. and a zealot from New Zealand. There's yeah, okay. some well, ridiculous there, stuff. There you go. Yeah. And I, the only reason he's talking about this show is so he can show us some awesome clips of him and Kirk playing dress up. Right. I they, totally get it. <laughs> I'm one I'm hundred percent in just like look how much fun it was. We made movies and we played cowboys. We, <laughs> they did. We rented a tank. Well, a guy we knew owned a tank and he <laughs> he said a lot lots of stuff of, about white lots replacement. Of World War II paraphernalia <laughs> in his garage. It was weird. <laughs> it was upsetting. Kept asking yeah. if I was an octoroon. <laughs> And at this point, he's just like trying to describe how he's been crushing it. You know, he's got his TV mm -hmm. show. Everything's going great. And they show us Kirk Cameron walking out on a stage at a literally empty concert hall. Yes. They show us. They show us nobody in any seat. And Kirk Cameron going out there like he's the MC of the Oscars. Nothing <laughs> happens. Empty. So, yeah. So things are humming along. But then. Ray learned that his banana video was all over the internet and someone had cut out the Coke can part that gave us all the context. <laughs> Not only that, but they also added a thing about how wild bananas are inedible and all the stuff that Ray was attributing to God was actually the byproduct of selectively breeding an inedible fruit <laughs> until it was perfect for humans the way God would have started it off if he existed. Yeah. A again, how the fuck would... Anything with a soda can being yes. in there as context fix that. Like, all right, so I'm getting railed by this banana. Let me finish. <laughs> <laughs> also a can of Coke. Does this make sense now? No. Oh, what? I'm a Christian now. <laughs> <laughs> right. But yeah, he talks about the evolution of the banana thing too, which is great because, yeah, like you said, they didn't start that shape. He, he claims they evolved to fit the human hand. Is that how that happened? No, I, I, I don't think that was part of the plan. B bananas had a meeting like, all right, how do we get more humans to eat us <laughs> or jerk us off or insert us into their Yeah, ass? right, right, exactly. Because what, what fits into all the holes? What I'm if so we don't taste like the dying elderly? Shut up, Frank. We're going with hand-shaped. <laughs> bananas are fucking awesome. <laughs> Fuck you. Um, it's the only the fruit dying that elderly are awesome. <laughs> yeah, ex well, that's that too. That too. I can go for some soylent. Doesn't matter. We the like flavor. it when old people die. 
So, all right. So, speaking of liking it when old people die, Richard Dawkins shows up at this point. <laughs> you did that transition. You have to keep it in the episode now. <laughs> it's not, it's, Richard, it's not that we don't love you. It's that we're done with you. <laughs> it's you've served your purpose. I mean, honestly, good, Dawkins buddy. probably would generally with agree, maybe not about himself, but in principle, I feel like he'd agree with me there. So, yeah. Just throwing rocks at Dawkins. Get out of here. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and to show you how he really has his, his finger to the pulse of the atheist movement, he also points out that uh, respected atheist P.Z. Myers also made fun of him. Remember, remember P.Z. Myers? Remember PZ Myers. <laughs> We're friends on Facebook. <laughs> Even Hemant made fun of him, and he's the friendly atheist. Yeah, you gotta come for Hemant? You come for Hammett, that lovely, lovely math teacher, which is the only reason most of the atheist shows exist. And you and he's the one who picked on you. Yeah, right, right. Exactly. You're so fucking stupid. You brought Hammett's mean side out. You know who else made fun of me? The guy with friendly in his name. I wonder yes. if I'm the problem. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Moment of clarity. Need to scream. Need he to goes, scream. <laughs> he goes, but then something strange happened. Atheists weren't afraid of me anymore. And I'm like, were, were we afraid of you before? Was that nope. the problem oh. you were having? It's the he confuses himself so many times in this movie. This is one of the best moments. He's like, almost overnight, I became the celebrity idiot poster boy for atheism. Yep. Scene. Yes. <laughs> yeah. He's like, all I'm sorry, the I thought I had a follow up to that. Did yeah. you not? Over, no. <laughs> didn't easy? Didn't we write another? No. Okay. All right. Yeah. He's like, all the atheists realized that they could have me on their podcast, and I was in no danger of making religion look good ever. So they invited me on their shows. I win. <laughs> um, he also says, by the way, he also says that when atheists review his movies, they get way more views. No, Ray, we don't. It's, we, we do it anyway. We do it out of hate. But but no, <laughs> this is going to be the same. Well, and if we did, downloads. you got us a bunch of views. So yeah, like, what, hey, yeah right. <laughs> much appreciated. So, you know, he shows all of these, you know, atheists on YouTube that are like, you know, reading his stupid books and talking about his stupid videos. And he's like, see, publicity. <laughs> no such thing as bad publicity. Yeah. Oh. He, he goes at one point, he's like, I was even on real TV at one point, which really kind of undercuts his I had a TV show in 170 countries. <laughs> line. In New Zealand. In yeah. New Zealand. Right. It wasn't even real TV. <laughs> I was on Auckland Local Access. Maybe you've heard of it. It's in Auckland, New Zealand. Also, <laughs> later on, I'm going to admit that I begged them not to bring up the banana thing as a full-grown adult, yes. which <laughs> I really wish he had shown us. He says at one point, this is an actual line from the movie, he goes, it was as though God gave me a supernatural cloak of humiliation. And I'm like, or you were just regular humiliated, I guess. But yes, one of those two things happened. You were supernaturally humiliated or you were just regular humiliated. <laughs> Me and Ray wearing the same cloak. I get it, buddy. We're yeah. winners. <laughs> Taking the world one Daisy Duke outfit at a time. <laughs> His 80s tennis outfit was my favorite. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's the greatest. And I love too. he's got like this, I guess the whole movie is kind of a montage of him getting progressively slightly less humiliated in debates, right? Than the first one, because this is the where we go to the thing where he debated Thunderfoot and didn't quite get as humiliated as one would expect talking to any human being that can string words together correctly. Nope. So now it's 2007 because the chronology of this thing is every kind of fucked. Was was it just 2009 a second ago? It was. It was. We've moved. That's that. Well, yeah, we moved back nine years to 2007. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so he was still screaming in people at public, but he'd gotten really good at it. See, the way they started their street preaching was with an intelligence test. <laughs> Which we failed by not knowing the difference between intelligence and trivia. We don't yeah. know what those two words mean. Right. Whether you meant it or not, all street preaching begins by failing an intelligence test. Yes. Yes. That's right. a prerequisite, <laughs> sir. And, and this, it's not even trivia. No. It's those third grade riddles. Like when I started to hear them, I was like, oh, my gosh, I remember this. Yeah, Say no so cows don't times. drink milk. It's just that that rhymed with all the other stuff you but said. But I asked you to say that word, so you didn't, you answered quickly. 
Yeah. Bob <laughs> Brinkman's an asshole. Whatever. <laughs> exactly. Me. Thank you. His riddle was whatever. not a riddle. Riddle. Yeah. All right. So then. Free to disagree. <laughs> this is Venn diagram. <laughs> so this is where he he uh, introduces us to Jurgen, whose story we will follow throughout the movie. Jurgen is an atheist who he annoyed once with a camera. Right. And like so many of Ray's atheists, you can't tell who's out crazying who because <laughs> Jorgen rides around the California beaches just in a man saddle, right? <laughs> Yelling angry answers to his third grade riddles at Ray Comfort. And Ray's talking to him and he's like, I don't believe in Gordon. I like to ride around in my banana hammock. And they just <laughs> raise like, are you a good person? And he's like, I am hats every day. And it's just, they're meant for each other. It's great. He found a friend. And yes, by the way, we're at 18 minutes, 27 seconds when we get the first, are you a good person shtick? Oh, I was so mad at this point because I was like, fuck, that's 47 more minutes of, are you a good person? He went right to it already. Yeah. And like the movie has 18 minutes of new material uh, <laughs> minus the 17 minutes of Banana Man clips that was, it was one minute. He made a one minute of new material movie. That's what yeah. I'm thinking at this point. It's amazing how much mileage he's gotten out of just rearranging the clips he already has. Yeah. And by the way, I want to point out that he, he puts Jurgen to his, you know, uh, uh, are you a good person test? And Jurgen whips his ass. He okay? sure does. You know, because he's like, you know, well, are you a good person? He's like, yeah, I'm a good person. He's like, well, have you ever lied or, or, or stolen anything? Like, he's like, yes, like every other living human, I've done that. And he's like, well, doesn't that make you immoral? He's like, no, because then everyone would be immoral and that word would cease to have meaning. I'm like, why are right. you keeping this in, Ray? It's because this guy's dead. Just just spoiler alert. It's because this guy's dead. And that was God's revenge on him for beating Ray in this argument. Jorgen failed the how many clothes should a man of his age wear test. But he did pass <laughs> Ray's challenge. Yes, exactly. <laughs> All right. So now, apropos of whatever it was we were just talking about, fuck Charles Darwin. <laughs> if atheism was a religion, no, nope. Charles Darwin would be our prophet. Oh, this is fun. Um, uh, if arguing about coupons was a religion, Sarah Palin would be its prophet. Uh, everybody's mom and dad is the Messiah because we don't believe in Santa Claus either. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Oh, uh, this, but this, I had a realization during this movie that I think meeting Ray. I might be the one who changes him atheist, right? He'd be like, don't you care about evolution? I'd be like, I have no idea how those fucking monkeys work. And he'd be like, everything was created. And I'd be like, look at what my body looks like. And I'd be like, fuck, man, you want to go have some gay sex? And I'll be like, no, but I like where your eyes are at. Come on, Ray. Let's go make a long order at Starbucks. <laughs> All right. So this is the moment where we're, we're introducing the time that Ray decided to write a new intro to On the Origin of Species, since he was a way better biologist than that monkey fucker Darwin was ever going to be. Oh, and he he so doesn't know how this worked out for him. He was like, Sam, hear me out. Great prank. I'll take a really seminal <laughs> science work. And I wrote, nah, -uh, in the front cover. Yep. And then I distributed it. To hundreds and hundreds of people. <laughs> and it was such a bad e idea that even the mainstream media was covering what utter and complete bullshit it was. Yeah. Sure. Uh, I'll let the book have its 100% truth, but I put my 1% of bullshit right there at the front. And, and, yeah, and uh, I'm sorry, do you know anyone who doesn't read the introduction to a book? <laughs> Did you say everyone? <laughs> Literally everyone. Oh. No, Damn. Eli, not not everyone. But but I've I've, I've still got to point this out too because th there's a book that goes with this movie that he was giving away at the um at the screening, and I got a copy of it at American Atheist uh, Convention. I didn't have it all day; it was Andrew's copy, so I could only read it for an hour. That was pretty much enough to finish it. But he he mentions at this point that when he had this idea to write this intro to On the Origin of Species, he'd never read the fucking book. <laughs> He'd been arguing against evolution for 20 years. According to his own movie, for 20 years, he'd been arguing against evolution. He'd never bothered to read the book. And my favorite moment in that book is when he starts going, it was fucking 
boring. That was <laughs> that was his assessment of on the origin of species. A lot of big ass words and stuff, not pictures. And you know what, Ray? You're listening, and I know you are. You and me had the exact same response <laughs> to on the origin of the species. Bunch of smart atheists were like, you should read this. And I was like, boo, nerds. You and me, Ray. One of us is switching sides by the end of this episode, buddy. And it's not going to be me. So Ray's a millionaire, buddy. Same. Okay, maybe it's me. There yeah, right, right. There you go. Yeah. Just want to be as relevant as Thunderfoot. <laughs> You could be a fool. All right. So, yeah. So their literal idea was to trick people into thinking they were reading someone else's book but and throwing their anti-evolution bullshit at it. That was their... It would be like me putting fucking diatribes, like slapping a Ray Comfort cover over diatribes and selling that to people. Yep. Except Andrew won't let me do that because Origins is in public domain and Ray Comfort shit isn't, so... <laughs> Yet? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But a mere yeah. three years later... <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So, but little did he know, though, um, he was, by doing this, he was, in his own words, blaspheming atheism's sacred writings. <laughs> so much projection here. He's like, and then my life was in danger because I had blasphemed this group that, you know, they, I mean, like, if they had murdered me, I would have understood at that point because, you know, <laughs> it's amazing. He understands so little. It's great. Also, point that he makes in the book and not in the movie here. In the book, he says that during this point, um, he says, like, I figured no one would have a problem with that. After all, I couldn't think of anyone who had an issue with books except for, you know, maybe the Nazis in 1930s Germany. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally what he says. I'm like, oh, wow. If only I could find some Christian who was against Harry Potter or something <laughs> this week. <laughs> yeah, right. In Poland. So anyway, so a bunch of atheists were going to go to the college where he's going to give this shit out, gather them up themselves and, you know, whatever, wipe their asses with Ray's introduction. But damn it, if Ray didn't outwit them by going a day early to give away their books. <laughs> you remember Pearl Harbor? We're basically <laughs> the Pearl Harbor <laughs> of Christianity. Genius. Heroes, you're welcome. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. And he's like, uh, you know, we gave away 170,000 books in just one day, and that total would eventually reach 200,000. So I'm like, so, wait a minute, wait a minute. How many days was that? Because it seems <laughs> like seems like you're a German school that just ended your lesson on World War II after France <laughs> surrendered. I, wait, I feel like there's more to this story. Anyway... Yeah, nailed it though. UCLA, that is a Christian college now. <laughs> yep, it sure is. Yeah, with that. California, Southern California no longer has any atheism. It's amazing. Yeah, no. <laughs> no more secularism in all of California. All right, I'm going to check out this long, boring scientific tome from the 1300s. But first, 1300s? the introduction. <laughs> I know nothing about that book. He all had right, some so birds or something. They were birds. Yeah, yeah there were some birds. <laughs> nailed it. I'm the king of atheism. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we whiplash our way into something about Penn Jillette talking about being given a Bible and being... This is the best! Okay, so basically, <laughs> here's what I took away from Penn Jillette's story. He basically went out one day and he says, hey, this guy gave me a Bible after his show the other day, and he wasn't a complete asshole, unlike everyone who's ever given me a Bible before. If Christians were like that, I probably wouldn't hate them. Bye! Right, which Christians took to mean... Christians who give atheist Bibles are the best. Yep, that's They're all just how Ray Comfort took it, yeah. To oh. the extent that Penn took down that video and put up a new video being like, come on, guys, I just meant don't tell me I'm going to burn in hell while I'm shaking hands in the Monte Carlo. Oh, <laughs> I regret everything. <laughs> I regret it all so much. But and, and I think this is actually one of the arguments that Ray is trying to make in the movie is that like, Christians are just trying to tackle you out of the way of a truck, right? right. They well, see that's the truck what, coming. Yeah, An that's invisible what, truck. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Well, but that's what Penn says, right? He says, hey, look, I get it, right? If you actually believe people are going to hell, you should be telling them about heaven. If I knew that you were about to get hit by a truck and you didn't believe that the truck was coming, at a certain point, I just tackle your ass and get you out of the way of the truck. And then Ray clings to that. And he's like, see, I'm just 
tackling people out of the way of an invisible truck. Yeah, but Ray, that's not quite how it's working out. Watch here! A truck! Ow! Ow. Saved your life! No! No, you didn't. You 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 broke into my home, you screamed, watch out a truck, and you tackled me. That's because there's a truck about to run over you. No, there's not. Hey, Noah. Uh, what's going on? Uh, not much, Heath. This dude just tackled me from Because he was about to be hit by a truck. Um in, in our living room? Yes. Truck? Yes, he was. No, nope. No, he was not. Exactly. No, I wasn't. And I got my funny bone on the table. Oh, that's the worst. Yeah. But gentlemen, gentlemen, don't you see? What matters is that I thought you were going to be hit by a truck. And what kind of person would I be if I let you die under a truck driven by a magic wizard who created the universe, knows everything you think and do, and wants to hit you with a truck for the way he created you? Uh... You'd be a reasonable person, dude. No, nobody's mad at you for trying to save people. They're mad at you because you're not listening. We're in a living room. There's no truck. The scientific consensus says there's no truck. Not that you should need that. So when you ignore all that and tackle Noah anyway, all you're doing is hurting people. Especially their funny bone. Exactly. So what, what do you want me to do? Just let people get hit by my wizard truck. No, no, Ray, what we want you to do is listen. You're supposed to be open to evidence. You're supposed to see the very real harm you're doing with your belief in the wizard truck. And you're supposed to change your goddamn mind when you know that you're wrong because you know damn well at this point that there's no fucking truck. Oh. Here's your arm. It's still all weird and tingly. Yeah. Oh, that's the worst. I hate that. You're the worst. I hate you. I am. Yes. Watch out a truck! Nope. <laughs> yeah, right, but okay, but see, that's the thing. What Penn is saying here is that, like, hey, if Christianity was real, Christians wouldn't be assholes. And that's true, right? That's true. <laughs> the problem here is that the first clause is not met, and thus you're assholes. <laughs> to which Ray responds, yes, it is. Right. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm like the guy in the trolley dilemma who, who re-rats the train to kill the fat guy, but but then there wasn't a train, okay? And then I just, <laughs> I just, I just pushed a fat guy off an overpass <laughs> onto a train track and killed him. I just murdered. Did I? I'm oh, constantly, fuck. I'm constantly uh, admitting that I I don't know that the train exists, and I'm and trying to pretend it's like a 50-50 thing, right, but I, right. I definitely know that I pushed that guy off the overpass <laughs> onto the train right. track, killed him. Okay, but I did reroute a train. But I, I rerouted I millions of gay people on another track. Don't, no. Oh, right, no, right. that's worse. Worse. Uh, I'm going to get it. Come back to me. Okay. Yeah, right. Well, yeah, it would, no, we will. That's sort of the chronology of the movie, because now it's 2011, and he's facing off with... Thunderfoot for a second time. Remember from the other time he did this? Yeah, they did it again, but this time in a parking lot next to a busy road. Yeah. <laughs> and the like 16 year old manager of a Dollar General has to walk out into this parking lot and be like, you're not allowed to do that in our class. <laughs> we didn't give you the and look, rights to do that. I haven't seen this video, but just based on the clips that Ray shows, it's just him berating a guy trying to give him an honest answer. All right, that's okay. what he shows us, is him saying something, you know, he, he's trying to get into, what he's trying to do is he's trying to trick Thunderfoot into the whole, like, absolute morality trap, right? And that works for Christians if they don't let you give a nuanced answer to anything, right? Right. If they, for instance, can edit the words you said. Right, and just leave you going, okay, all right, well, here's the problem with what you're saying. Edit. Right, <laughs> after you say, and then what they have is you going like, so you're telling me rape isn't wrong, and you going, no, that, no. okay, so what I'm saying is, and then it cuts off, right? That's what Ray gives us here. Oh, literally, yep. at one point, he's like, so was the Holocaust wrong? Zing, rent. That's a tough one. Like, yeah. Really? Come on. You think, did he really say that? Did he? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. And then Eli's profession gets a little more representation. Oh, I'm no! sure. Dean Dill, Dean. you're pr proud of. Dean. Him. Okay. A little background. Dean Dill is a brilliant, truly 
brilliant magician, one of the most gifted performers, but he he loves Jesus so much and he has you you get Dean Dilled in magic at least once. It is a passage through fire to sit down with magician Dean Dill and be like, oh man, I gotta tell you, I think you're so amazing in this and him just being like, I gotta tell you that Jesus is both a love and below us. And you'd be like, I would like to not do magic anymore, please. I <laughs> would like to quit. If I stop doing magic right now, can we not have this conversation? I loved watching how baffled Kirk Cameron was by his coin trick. Like, by a coin trick I can do. It wasn't even like, like that. that, that one of the ma- amazing things about knowing magic is watching which magic trick they decide to use on the video. Going like, okay, that was the setup, though, for the good trick I did. But yeah, yeah. so... But Kirk Cameron oh, Kirk, is Kirk, fucking amazing. Freaks out. Dean Dill like takes a quarter from behind Kirk's ear, and he's like, "Damn, <laughs> murder! He's like, Burn it! Put it back! Burn it! Put it back! That's my gay money!" <laughs> <laughs> also, little little behind the scenes on this drama here, not to tell any stories out of school, but basically. Dean loves Jesus. He went to go perform for Ray because Ray loves Jesus too. And then Dean was like, hey, I know Penn. I'll have Penn be your best friend. He'll come on your show. You'll have a slumber party. And Penn was like, no, Dean. No, man. No, I won't. And Dean was like, please. I used to be good at magic. And then there was an incident which no one talks about. And now I love Jesus. Oh, like, so Ray Crawford's like, you like Penn Jillette? Well, I saw this thing on the internet where he said people who believe in Noah's Ark is stupid. You believe in Noah's Ark. I'm like, he's that fucking middle school kid that wants to see someone else get in a fight. He's that it's, kid. That's he's great chanting comfort. fight next to Dean yes. Dillon. Yes. Yes. <laughs> fight, fight. Oh, who said that? He sounded really sexy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. So Dean gives uh, Ray the like, info at penandteller.com email address that because they're close friends and Ray, (laughs) Ray emails and these are the exact words from Ray's email he says I would crawl over broken glass for 10 miles to interview Penn Gillette and Penn if you're listening please please come on Ben make that happen Watch him walk the 10 miles and then just walk the fuck away. Or just, just give him the, okay, please. four questions. I'm answering them with yeses and noes. Oh, <laughs> oh don't do me look Larry did. Don't do me like Larry did, Pin. Pin. Yeah, but I love that this whole scene is like, and my buddy Dean Dill was going to hook me up with Pen, but then it didn't didn't work work out very well. So never yeah. mind. God clearly doesn't want me to speak with Penn Jillette <laughs> unless wait for it. Well, wait several scenes for it. Maybe you'll see. Well, yeah. Maybe you won't, but you, we, we, you you'll, you'll understand. Okay. There was this eighth grade dance where <laughs> Lily was mad at Aaron who was dating her at the time. What? And so she danced with me to make him jealous. <laughs> it's the movie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, Eli, I use their I real names. Yeah, out, I was so going to say I need to do real last name. Okay, if you could beep out so, their real last names yes, for those can, real people who I still can, exist, I knew that. And look, what's amazing is that before you even said it, I'm like, I'm going to have to beep out those fucking names. Aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> I forget every. Not everyone's in my head. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, so now it's September of 2011, and Dan three the, years later, yeah, exactly, and Ray Comfort. <laughs> has just released his video where pro-abortionists switch to anti-abortionists in just seconds. Oh, and I have watched 180. I've been saving it for like when one of our dogs or wives dies. Uh, <laughs> spoiler alert, not what happens in that movie. <laughs> he doesn't turn like a room full of a thousand atheists into pro-life in 60 seconds like he's fucking <laughs> Bobby Fisher just throwing baby parts at people. <laughs> Yeah, I've seen him switch atheists in seconds, so I'm guessing no, but yeah. But really, honestly, basically, this is just an ad for, like, this would be like if if I just cut in to say, why, this was like that humorous skit we did on Citation Needed, episode 64, and played two clips. Yeah. (laughs) You know, this is funny, but it'll never be as funny as our patron-only review of Batman versus (laughs) Superman. (laughs) Yeah, but but anyway, so he shows how like, or he talks about how he made this video and he saved all of these unborn babies' lives and he can show you pictures of babies to show you what that would look like. And then he goes, and Richard Dawkins once tweeted, and as soon as he said that, I tensed up, 
you know, I just got my <laughs> asshole just closed. And he's like, <laughs> any fetus, this is the quote of Richard Dawkins uh, tweet here. He says, any fetus is less human than an adult pig. And I'm like, oh, it could have been a hell of a lot worse. OK, <sighs> <sighs> yes, I agree with that Good. one. Absolutely. <laughs> yep, that's the only tweet Richard ever said. <laughs> that was his one experiment. <laughs> oh, you got on us. Twitter. You got us. <laughs> <laughs> and then we learn that Ray Comfort meant to spell thoughts T H O R T S when he spelled it <laughs> T H O R T S. He meant to do that, guys. From now forward, this movie will just devolve into a series of ever more pedantic. <laughs> I wanted to go I, to my on, room. Who doesn't write the word thorts? T H O R T S. <laughs> Ray, at least when Heath and Noah pointed out, I just cop to it, man. Don't. It's like, he says, it's like when he's texting and he shortens it. I've never been like thoughts. Jesus, I, I, honestly, I do not have time for this G. <laughs> Maybe I throw in an R, an R instead of that H. Yeah, yeah so that'll do it. Apparently, he sent this video through three intermediaries. He sends a copy of his video to Richard Dawkins, and he spells out on the front, I would love to hear your thoughts on this. And then he goes, he has a whole segment of the video. Where he's like, and that Dawkins asshole assumed that I meant I was stupid. I know how to spell thoughts. I'm not going to tell you now, right now, because we all obviously know how it's really spelled without... You go uh, first. I'm uh, testing uh, you. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so then after being intentionally baited by that misspelling, Richard Dawkins went out and promoted his video about abortion being wrong and all the atheists stopped getting abortions. Yep. And now, three years later, it's 2012, and we're having pizza with <laughs> atheists, apparently. Reason rally! God, this is just, this is just like, it's like free association writing, but a movie. Oh, but this scene is so great, because it is the only time Ray has been the only one in the room who doesn't understand he's losing. Right? This isn't one of his weird one-on-one -on -one interviews. This is a whole room of very nice, very hot people waiting for two Little Caesars pizzas going... Okay, Ray, why don't we all define terms and him being like, no, thank you. Anyway, so <laughs> who here would kill baby Hitler? Well, he comes up and he goes like, he's like, and so many of these atheists put this all on YouTube and he didn't even edit out my answers. They were so much nicer to me than I am to them. Like, as he's <laughs> saying that, as he's saying how nice it was of them to, like, not edit out all the stuff, he says he's showing us audio-less video of them asking questions into a microphone. Right? Yep. So, yeah, but he does he does include one question that an atheist ans asked him. He flubs it. He's too dumb to know that he flubbed it, and we move on. And we move on to actually what I think might be my favorite ever movie of Ray's, which was like evolution versus science. I forget what it's called, but I've seen it. And it is he pretended to be a documentary filmmaker. And so he found a bunch of real scientists and teachers and stuff and tried to like trick them into admitting there's no evidence for evolution. But what it actually is is it's a series of videos of people realizing that Ray is a crazy person. And that <laughs> is wonderful, right? Because they all start out being like, hi, I am Heinrich von Stufel. I am head of biology at the University of blah blah blue And by the end of it, they're like, right, right. Yeah, no, rocks can't talk. That's true. <laughs> that is true. Would you look at the time? It's not no, be it here o'clock. I know. I'm not saying that it does squirt in your face. I'm just asking why you keep bringing that up. I don't, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's the end of your thought. Sorry. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> well, he goes, he's like, none of these biology professors could provide any evidence for evolution. They could only provide evidence for speciation and adaptation. Um, Which, like when combined, <laughs> are evolution. Show me Magneto and Vision and Ultron, I'll shut up. They won't do it. They still won't show me. <laughs> Turn a monkey into a guy. People showed me <laughs> hydrogen combined with oxygen and oxygen combined with hydrogen, but there was no water anywhere. What the fuck do you want? <laughs> and at one point he's like, well, birds are still birds and dogs are still dogs. So 
I'm done. But like, dude, we're not amoebas. Like, that's what yeah. you talking about. There's no pterodactyls. He even goes on at one point to say bacteria are still bacteria, right? So, like, the category gets as big as he needs it to be. He's like, evolution re- would require a change in kind. Now, that's not a scientific word. He will offer no definition of it, and no scientist could overcome his ephemeral hurdle because of that. But you got to feel bad for Ray, right? Because yeah. as recently as, like, what, 60 80 years ago, someone couldn't be like, oh, yeah, do you want to watch adaptation on video? I have a little video yeah, right, right here right. on my phone. Do you want to see the challenge of 70 years ago just absolutely with your own eyes <laughs> right now? Yeah. And hey, so no. he's got to be I like, don't. turn a duck into a hat. <laughs> <laughs> Ray, <gasps> hey, look, here's a picture of Thomas Smith. I want you to stand next to it and just kind of curl your shoulders over a little bit. There yeah. you go. Wow. And stride it out. Yeah. Do you see? Do you see what we're doing? I closed my eyes, so I'm winning. <laughs> <laughs> Why doesn't that guy have any feet? <laughs> so a few months later, he released his deceptively edited video, and the deceptively edited people were furious for some reason. I don't know why. Oh, this is when uh, he shows Jacqueline Glenn, right? Jacqueline yeah. Glenn! <laughs> yeah. And J- Knock Glenn it out of like, the park here. Right? Yeah, right. Yeah. It's just one right. after the other of the most respected voices in atheism. Yeah. <laughs> I love, though, that he had to blur out yes! Jacqueline Glenn's n- entire, like, neckline area. Like, basically yes! from the chin down to her waist. Because his 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 viewers were freaking out that there was a, a little bit too scoopy of a neckline <laughs> on her shirt that did not show her breasts, by the way, just to be clear. No. And speaking of Hawks, um, now we're going to talk about the time he got mad because someone called him a bibliophile. <laughs> uh, not just someone, Leone. We know Leone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, he says every time you make a small mistake, like going out in public, getting upset by an unfamiliar word, not looking the word up and assuming that it's a portmanteau of Bible and pedophile. That is a small mistake (laughs) in race mind. I guess comparatively, right, to his mistake. (laughs) He made an entire section of this movie about how he got laughed at for thinking there was an existing single word for biblical pedophile. Other than priest. Yeah. Yeah, right. He even gives a little rebus puzzle. It shows a picture of Bible plus pedophile. Oh, my God. It's so much fun. And he goes in the middle of this. He's like, and then suddenly all the atheists wanted to just pretend they knew what bibliophile meant. Like, everybody knows. That's the that is probably the crowning moment of this movie where he goes (laughs) like they all knew what bibliophile means. All right. Pop quiz. What is? What does cat mean? <laughs> Try to look up Thort in one of your biblios. Exactly. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the God of Thunder. Yes. <laughs> Nailed it. And then that dastardly Richard Dawkins pointed out how stupid he was again. <laughs> and But so, okay, but here's the thing. I, and, and this occurred to me at this moment in the movie, and I felt like we needed to point this out. Ray, you are forcing yourself into an intellectual debate, right? If Richard Dawkins was just following you around Walmart and making fun of your vocabulary and your spelling skills, he'd be the asshole. But you are literally elbowing your way into our table without an invitation and demanding to be heard without like reading the main book that you're talking about or knowing how thought is spelled (laughs) or what bibliophile means. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Dawkins isn't following around being like, hey, are you an illiterate person? Or do you consider yourself an illiterate person? I'm a stranger. No, <laughs> yeah, none of that. That's right. right. Stop coming to us. You could end it all. <laughs> you could end it all, Ray. <laughs> Just go back. No. The Christians, they'll be laughing at your great banana bits. Yeah. I'll be out of material. I'll have to work on the other million people just like you. Yeah. We'll win for everybody. You want to? You want to put your dick in this eight-year-old Bible, huh? Huh? The <laughs> bibliophile? <laughs> Idiot. All right, but 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 Ray managed, he was feeling pretty down on himself, but he managed to console himself with the fact that this is pretty much exactly like the Christians that were fed to the lions in the Colosseum. 
Uh, <laughs> Rhea, I've got some bad news for when you meet the other Christian martyrs. Ray, Ray Comfort, it's me, God. Well, the almighty God, I knew I was right all along. That's right, Ray, you were. Welcome to the heaven of Christian martyrs. Well, this is Josephus. I was burned at the stake for my beliefs. And Chu Wong. I spent 20 years in a Chinese prison for my faith in Christ. Weird, I feel like you would have an accent if you spent, if you were in a Chinese prison. I agree, you should have an accent. You're like, get out of the sketch. I'm both characters in the sketch. You get out of the sketch. You do. You do it. Stop anyway, it. Anyway, anyway. poke. Ray, why don't you tell him what you went through? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I have people make fun of me on the internet. Oh, you're done? People yeah. made fun of you on the internet. That's it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. no, no, I I get it. You you mean there was like a like a massive propaganda movement against you, people who called for your death or No, 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 no. Just like when I would say silly things, people would point it out and laugh at me. When you when you said silly things, they'd do that. Yeah, just when I said the silly things. And and because of this, you were desperately poor or like you couldn't find work. You had no peace in your life? No, no. Uh, my organization actually took in several million dollars a year and paid me a publicly declared salary of over a $100,000. And that's just in 2017. So you you were a millionaire? I mean, probably. My, my finances weren't disclosed because, you know, no taxes. But based on my movies and my books, it's fairly reasonable to assume. So, sorry, I'm, sorry. I, I just want to be clear. Um, You were a millionaire who didn't pay taxes yep. and who sometimes would have people make fun of you when, when you said stupid stuff. That's the, the tragedy you're describing. Gibbity. Did I mention okay. I was burned at the stake with fire? What about this are you not getting? Uh, don't, don't, don't listen to him, Ray. I get it. Thank you, Mr. God. Call me Donnie. Honestly. It was fucking hot. Am I crazy? Am I the crazy one? People are mean up here. I know. I know. <laughs> I poke. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess there's no real way to argue this is the end of Act Two, but fuck it. We're taking a break anyway. I'm going to give the last half the far hard sell, though. Are you a good person? What if you're wrong? What sound do these keys make? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the banana-tastic conclusion of The Fool. Eve. Hey, Doc, how's it going? Not bad, not bad. How's your mom and dad? They're good. They're good. Thanks for asking. Oh, glad to hear it. Now, what brings you in today? Uh, right. So, you know how, like, sometimes when you're going to do it up and do the... Do the deed, and it's uh, uh early. What? Okay. Uh, so like before, uh, you were you were planning. Uh, baseball doesn't sometimes like during the stuff. I have no idea what you, you mean. Just to be uh, super clear, I don't know what you're talking about. Really? Has this ever happened to you? Up to 39% of men experience premature ejaculation, but too few of them know that there may be help. Like, when you want to, uh -uh, but, squinch, you know. There's a race thing? We're doing a race thing now? Nope. What? No. Sutraline has been proven to help some people with premature ejaculation, and 4 hymns can connect you with a doctor who can evaluate and help identify the right treatment for you and avoid whatever this is. Okay, so, you know, you're, you're going to have a good time, one of those moments, but it ends too fast. Oh, like a day you at the it. carnival is what you're saying. No, nope. With four hymns, you can skip the awkward doctor's visits and get products shipped right to your door. And right now, our listeners get a special offer. You can get started for just $10. Just go to fourhims.com slash movies to get started. That's F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash movies. See website for full details and safety information because you should have the conversation, but there's got to be an easier way. Okay, so you see my hands right now? You see this motion I'm doing? You're gonna, very clear? You're going to propose. You're proposing to me okay, right now. Okay, just never mind. No, 
I will not marry you. That's what okay. you're asking. From the makers of The Fool. Hey, excuse me, can I use your bathroom? Uh, no, it's customers only. Comes another heartwarming tale hidden in heartbreak. I totally understand that, but this is really an emergency. And Customers I, I, only. See the oh sign? Oh, God. Uh-oh. Ah, really? This summer, full-on shitting myself in that bodega. Hey, you'll, you'll always remember me, right? Yep. Yep. For the rest of my life. Lovely. Yeah. Can I use the bathroom Still now? Still no. Huh. Yep. Want to shit again? <laughs> no. <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. Uh, we're going to rejoin Ray three years later in July of 2013. 2099. <laughs> See, <laughs> looks around later. the world with a new set of eyes. See, he was pretty sure this whole time that people have been laughing with him, but it turned out that wasn't the case. Yeah, I was a giant embarrassment and I knew it. Oh, this is a weird section from a movie. I made a whole section about this. <laughs> Keith just, Keith just sidles up to Ray. Oh, I'm, I'm lonely. You want to take a you want to take a long pause together on a recorded medium? I do. I do. Let's do it. <laughs> hey. <laughs> You have any sneakers that say wild card? I do. <laughs> Did anyone notice them? <laughs> Not until I hurt myself stretching my leg above <laughs> the table at a restaurant. <laughs> but I do have sneakers that say wild card very subtly on the back. They're nice. nice. Converse. Cool. Custom. Wild card. Doing great. <laughs> that's that's usually a good sign that you are doing great when you have the personalized Best converse life. with a, make a personality trait that you're desperate to have other than tall. I'm sorry. Maybe you heard a little person... Named Michael Jordan. He had sneakers. Yep. <laughs> and he was tall. <laughs> bald. Dave Nike. So. <laughs> All right. But then uh, Ray got some wisdom from a guy in a trucker hat. <laughs> <laughs> this is Scotty who reminded Ray that God loves humiliating his best and most dedicated servants. And Scotty was right. Darn it. <laughs> <laughs> and then. Ray's like, yeah, atheists, they made fun of me some more. They said, I'm like a train wreck waiting to happen. They can't look away. No, <laughs> that's that's just looking at a train, man. That's, not, <laughs> that's just staring at trains. It's, you didn't get look, that. They one. said they wanted right. to run a train on me. I'm pretty sure I know what they mean. <laughs> What am oh. I, a bibliophile? No, no, you're not. And speaking okay. of wanting to run a train on him, this is where he introduces David Silverman to the show. Uh, <laughs> he says, even David Silverman, the president of American Atheists at the time, uh, would have lunch with me. Well, and again, this is so sad because Ray's like, we had a lovely lunch several times throughout this movie. And it's like, yeah, man, literally everyone in atheism but us would have a lovely lunch with you. Yeah, literally everyone, but you're talking to the only three people who would wreck that lunch by being like, <laughs> I tucked the tablecloth into my underwear. I ordered four steaks. Fuck you, Ray. I'll eat your eyes out of your skull. <laughs> what? If you want to make a movie, have lunch with us. We will what? wreck it. Hold on. I just want to clear something up. Why would ordering four steaks ruin that lunch? <laughs> being weird. All right. So now we're back to street preaching. Um, he was, this is such a weird little fucking bit that he cuts into. This is the part with Ken. The, okay. So, and I love <laughs> Ken is the hero of this goddamn film. So Ken is a guy that he used to go out and do street preaching on Huntington beach. And the way he would draw a crowd is he'd give out a dollar for trivia questions, right? You answer a trivia question correctly. You get a dollar. So there was an atheist that would come up and just answer all his trivia questions <laughs> and take all his money. It's the best. But <laughs> What what that means is Ray Comfort could only think of like ten trivia questions ever in the yes, universe yes. in the history. You because just he's had like, to hear yeah, it through Ken, twice. Ken, Ken kept showing up, and he always knew the answers because I asked the same questions. Because there's only ten trivia questions, and it's bullshit. I had to keep giving him dollars. <laughs> <laughs> was trapped, trapped in a vicious cycle. But it's not all doom and gloom for Ray because Ken, Ken got his. He assigned. Tipped slightly. Light, lightly blew onto the edge of his shirt. And I, I wanted the whole movie to grind to a halt and for Ray to just be like, how come the whole internet didn't call Ken Mr. 
sign and make a bunch of <laughs> YouTube videos about how you got hit by a sign and sign face. I, I tweeted it at Richard Dawkins and Ricky Gervais and nobody retweeted it. So just, just sat there and then at four in the morning I deleted it. Sign a file? Why don't you fuck a kid on a sign? Wind. <laughs> yeah, that's the whole point of this. They show a video of Ken coming up to get his dollar again. And some wind blows, you write that in the cheap-ass little cardboard sign they have on an easel, blows over and hits Ken on the shoulder. And Ray apparently thinks this is video evidence that Gad reached down and, you know, didn't really want to give Ken a what for, but wanted to let him know, hey, man, I could, though. I could smack you around. Uh, and watching <laughs> Ray do a one-man, oh, in front of yes. the camera is amazing. <laughs> Comes back on camera in blackface. What? No, Ray. 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 Too fast. Don't do the super hot fire. You wouldn't do that. Don't try to Superman me. (laughs) All right. So now it's spring of 2015 and Ray's scrappy little ministry is really taking off. Hell, even biker lumberjack son of Gloin believes in heaven now. now. A mere three years later. (laughs) What the fuck was this guy? The mohawked bearded guy? Oh, bird guy. Yeah. No, 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 no. No, no. no. Beard guy. Yeah, beard guy before bird guy. The guy who was eating his own beard for 20 minutes. (laughs) It's the longest part of the movie. It's this crazy dwarven soldier just talking forever and literally eating his beard. Like, I get it. Like, you you get a little snacky sometimes, but like. (laughs) What you know? I don't get put in movies while I'm doing that. I just saying. I love that like cra- crazy ranting guy on the street can just immediately fill in as the voice of reason in a Ray Comfort movie with no notice, right? Because this is just ranting crazy drunken drugged guy saying words into the camera and Ray nodding along, going, "Ah, this guy knows his shit, huh? Look at his look at his mohawk. <laughs> cool. He obviously knows so what he's doing. You forge axes. That's." <laughs> And there's a God, right? Yep, we agree. We're both not crazy. Yep, and there's a pirate there with a bird that bites Ray Comfort. The bird biting Ray Comfort is fucking amazing. I was so goddamn happy when this happened because <laughs> the, the pirate shows up and Ray's like, I'm going to talk to this pirate. He has a parrot on his shoulder. And I was like, oh my God, please get attacked by the parrot. Please get attacked by the parrot. Please get attacked. Yes! <laughs> Oh, oh, it's amazing. It bites him right on the hand and Ray's like, mother! But <laughs> Yeah. Hey, Ray, that's so much worse than getting hit with a sign. I guess if there really was a deity behind all of it, it's a bird god and he hates you. Oh, and what's amazing is you get to see Ray drop character for a second when he gets bit. Yeah. <laughs> He stops being all like, oh, let me help you. He's just like, get your fucking bed off me, you piece of shit. I mean, are you a good person? Yeah, is that tested for rabies? All right. Oh, oh. and speaking of are you a good person, we have to go back to Jurgen now, right? Mm. We have to check back in with Jurgen, the atheist that owned him earlier. I was wondering if he was going to tie up that loose end. Not yet. Yeah. Not yet. He's just going to remind you that it's still loose now. Right, like this is his actual line to Jurgen during this exchange. He goes, "You know, I'd hate for you to die and for God to give you what you deserve." That's the actual quote. I'd hate yep. for God to give you what you deserve, i.e., burning in hell for eternity. Fucking Scandinavian. What are you, sixty-eight? You're gonna die soon. Okay, <laughs> put bye. on a shirt. You're eighty. <laughs> All right. So now we fast forward th- a mere three years later. We fast forward to the day. Of the infamous lick. Oh, right? I was so hoping to make it into this movie. I the whole time I was standing on my sofa at this point. Yeah, just looking at all the background, <laughs> running it really slow and shit. No, so it's June third, twenty sixteen, Washington D.C. Ray was there. Eli's tongue was all salivating <laughs> away. So he he starts off. He introduces the thing where he was going to give away the subway cards, but then the cops said, "Hey, man." You can't just come to their thing as protesters and be amongst them, right? Like, Yeah, and he claims the D.C. police told him that they would arrest him and his evangelists if they talked to any atheists. Like, what? how the fuck would that work? Like, how would you enforce that? <laughs> Are it's you so an atheist? Stupid. Too late. Ha, gotcha. Yeah. I am. Right. 
<laughs> Take no, him down, they, officer. Right. No, what they said is you, you have to have a permit to stage a giant protest of a thousand people. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, not not even not even that you have to have a permit that you have to stay in the place that sort of set aside for protesters, right? Like you can't just rush the stage at somebody else's fucking thing as a protester. Good. Trust me, I know. I learned that from March for Life this year. Yeah, you can't, <laughs> you can't roll a Hot Wheels truck at somebody and then tackle them out of the way. <laughs> 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 You were driving the truck. It doesn't count. All right. So, yeah. So he just learned that he had to follow the rules. So he's like, fuck it. I guess I'll give these subway cars to homeless people. Then it's like, man, that's really what you should be doing with your money to start with, though. Right. That should have been. That was your plan B, man. Homeless people. Free food was plan B. I just want to be clear. Okay. (laughs) Yep. And he could not resent it more. And you know who I ended up having to give these food cards to? Dirty, stinking, homeless people. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but just as we're waiting for the big lick to come, he says, and while I was in Washington, D.C., some uh, Christians videotaped me. Here's that video. And now he's just talking to us in direct address, the tricky bastard. Here's a clip during which I didn't get tricked by any fancy words into being a biblical pedophile. There you go. (laughs) Yeah. Nailed it. Again, like even when he gets to just choose whatever clip he wants and not put in the question or the response, he still looks like a fucking idiot because he's basically he spends like three minutes saying, hey, look, man, if God isn't real, my life would be pathetic, like entirely pointless. I would just be an intentional laughingstock bringing shame to my ancestors and my generations with every breath that I took. I'm sorry. What was the question again? Sorry. I mean, even if God were real. And that we just had the evidence that we have, I would be monstrous to the people around me. Shit. <laughs> Shit. Do not do good things. That's very important. Hindus want you to do good things. <laughs> yeah, and they're fucking ignore wrong. them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Fucking Hindus and their good deeds. Yeah. No, good deeds don't get you. That's, that's a bribe for God. God knows that. Moving on. Uh, here's how to get God to like you. You tell him you love his son. <laughs> yeah, right. Back to back, back to back points he makes. And you will, and the interview cuts in at one point and says, look, 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 I, I see how this is a comforting thought for you that you're fighting with the good guy against the demon and stuff. But, but how do you know it's true? And Ray's like, I'll tell you what, let me ignore that question and just finish saying the thing I was already saying, which already wasn't the answer to your last question. Fuck you. Don't do good things. Yeah, and and then he right, and then he says at the end, and like many other atheists, and very notably not like me ever, he didn't edit out anything I said. <laughs> right, like so he knows that's the nice thing to do. He admitted it in his video. All right, now it's time for Lawrence Krauss to make an unwitting guest appearance in this one too. Right, and it's also really sad because he admits here how he got the Lawrence Krauss interview, which is that the people that were interviewing him for their documentary also had Lawrence Krauss. And they were like, oh, we're going to go interview Lawrence Krauss. And he was like, oh, can I come? And they were like, no. And he was like, please. And they were like, you can have four questions and you have to wear a silly hat for an hour beforehand. (laughs) Yeah, it's got to be sillier than the one that Lawrence Krauss was already wearing. (laughs) Basically, you're going to have to do the jester hat thing from before. Yeah, but he explains that he wanted to get an interview with Lawrence Krauss for his, in his own words, then new video, The Atheist Delusion. And he was, in his own words, like Goofy at Disneyland. Yeah. Ray, Goofy's not excited to be in Disneyland. You (laughs) are excited to meet Goofy. What do you think happens in Disneyland, Ray? (laughs) You know what, man? Take a week off. Go to Disneyland. Don't talk to anyone about Jesus. You deserve it. No, you don't. (laughs) All right. And then we watch a little preview for the atheist delusion. And then we have this amazing weird blurry name drop thing that basically lasts for the rest of the movie where like he wants you to know that he was in a room with Pendulette, but he's not allowed to show that Pendulette was in the room because he doesn't have <laughs> inter- <laughs> he doesn't have permission to use his likeness or his That's voice insane. <laughs> it's amazing he's like you can videotape me as long as you never use it for anything <laughs> 
<laughs> and Ray Comfort's like, yes, I will take that video. Absolutely. Right. Thank you so much, Pen. We are best friends. <laughs> and we're just getting like Pen in like witness protection program off to the side with like the crazy voice and then like... The- the letters across the screen is the best. Yeah, right. They can't even use his voice, so they put subtitles up of like, Penn said this. <laughs> Just me sitting outside of Cecil's apartment in a tree. Pathetic, Ray. Respect yourself. <laughs> Come on, man. Well, I love to. Okay, so they show a little bit of Lawrence sort of like working out with him how they're going to do this interview. And Lawrence is like, okay, you get to ask four questions. When I tell you to fuck a monkey, you actually have to fuck the monkey all the way till one of you comes already doing it. So there's such a dark magic moment where Ray just whispers in absolute desperation. He's just like, please, please don't mention banana man. And Lawrence is like, Oh, I I should bring up the banana man thing. And he's like, if you want to, you <laughs> I've never been more empathetic to Ray when he's just like, stupid Ray. Shouldn't have even brought it up. Didn't even know about the banana thing. Don't say banana, man. Don't say banana. Am I talking out? Banana, banana man. man. <laughs> also, this is great. Moment. I'm also the bibliophile guy. <laughs> Quiz me on how to say thoughts. <laughs> So also, I love this moment where he he has on video him and Lawrence Krauss making this following agreement. Lawrence says, "Okay, so you're either going to use all of this video or none of it. Right. No editing. And he's like, no editing. And then we cut away from that video. (laughs) There's literally an edit right after. There really is. There literally is. And we cut back to Ray Comfort talking into the camera more to that atheist film crew that asked him, like, can you be a good person without religion? And he's like, well, you know, as long as you define good person wrong and you're okay with mixing fabrics and lusting after people, uh, you know, I guess. Yeah. And they they literally here go, so you mean thought crimes? And he's like, yes, yep. fantastic. Me. Exactly. In my movie, yes, oh, thought crimes. The, he keeps getting these gotcha rebuttals, but he's too dumb to know. They're like, so thought crimes? He's like, yep, thought crimes that you can burn in eternity for is what I'm both defending and advocating for. Do you you want me to draw you a picture? I can... Let me let me write that down, because I've never called it that before. Thought crimes. <laughs> <laughs> and then Lawrence Cross is like, well, that sounds a lot like 1984. And Ray's like, I don't think morality was different in the 80s. <laughs> Same rules. Like a cocaine thing? You doing a race thing? Say what it is. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and, and also, by the way, he he compares everything to a filthy sheep here. Why is it always like a filthy sheep for you, Ray? Why is why is that your go to analogy for everything as a filthy sheep? Huh? And then, okay, so we get to the end of the Lawrence Cross video, and then he says, "And Penn Jillette was right there, and we were set up with cameras and lights and everything. It was like God was ordaining an interview for me with Penn Jillette, but." But then Penn said no, because there is no God. No, no, it's different reasons. No, reason. God was testing cloak of humiliation. Me, I guess. And by the way, I just have to point it out. It's just a little thing. But through this clip where he's explaining how much he wanted to talk to Penn, we have a shot of Lawrence Krauss practicing taking off his wedding ring. And it is so distracting. Did anyone see it but me? No. <laughs> Ray no. Watt, it's just Lawrence Krauss being like, yeah, that sucker comes right the fuck off. <laughs> for me. I told the witch doctor. <laughs> <laughs> so, and before we cut away from this, there's like nine times when they pretend that this scene is about to be over. This is the first one where Lawrence is like, hey, I, I'm sorry, can I ask you a question? And Ray's like, yes, I would love to be in this room with you more. And he says, basically, th- I'm, I'm very lightly paraphrasing Lawrence Krauss's question. He basically goes, are you embarrassed by how stupid you are? <laughs> yeah. And so this and this is my best worst. This is where Ray's like, yeah, you know what? I am embarrassed about the banana video, but only in the fact that you guys didn't see the great Coke can bit that leads into it. So you didn't even know why I was talking about a tab at the top. And Lawrence is just like, OK, man. Yeah, he's just like, OK, you're embarrassed for the wrong Reasons, though, right? You you know that. It's like if Carrie had started doing physical bits while she was covered in the pig's blood. Just like, is it raining in here? Up, I'm going down the escalator. Floored one. Yes. Blood. Floored two. 
<laughs> More blood. <laughs> Canoe Best prom ever. Blood. <laughs> so, yeah. They're all going to laugh with you more like it. Am I right, Mama? <laughs> it's <laughs> <laughs> it's a carry deep cut. Yeah, if you no, it watch that one. movie from the eighties. <laughs> okay, and so then once again, it's like Lawrence is about to leave, and then he turns around. And he's like, "Okay, I gotta ask you about the hell thing, right? Like, your God, he condemns people to hell, and you're okay with that?" And he's like, "No, no, 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 no. It's not that God condemns us to hell. It's that we should have had his dinner ready by the time he got home, and we were asking for it." <laughs> Yeah, he actually asked him. He's like, do you really think there's a loving God given all these things I just gave you as examples? All those problems of evil? And Ray's like, well, I mean, God punished the Nazis for all the little stuff, too, like lustful thoughts. And <laughs> yes! Like, several people in the room off camera are just like, what? what? <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, and then, okay, and now it's they're finally kicking his ass out, and... Lawrence Cross says, okay, goodbye. And Ray has this like moment, right, where he gets all excited. He's like, goodbye. Oh, that's a contraction of God be with you. Boom. You accidentally believe in God. I'm out. I'm out before you can take it back. Right? <laughs> it's the best. And they're like, no, I don't think that's true. And he's like, Google it. Google it right now. No, no, he's not, <laughs> though. That's the thing, right? It, it takes one of the atheists to go like, well, you know, we could just check and see who's correct on this. And they're like, yes, let's all agree on an objective source and then accept whatever the objective source says. And they do. And Ray is right. And then he literally runs away because he's winning. Yep. The one time he ever got something correct and it was on video. Damn it. He he flees the room. He's like, so I was right. All right. Goodbye forever. <laughs> we no dive. Yeah. I'm laughing at you now. They're gonna call you. They're gonna call you the g goodbye man, and they're gonna make videos about you. <laughs> you you're only gonna have your hundred and thirty thousand dollars in salary alone to comfort you. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> also, like, there's other words like like cereal is from Ceres, the Roman god of agriculture. Yeah, like, right. What's, yeah, right, right. E echoes a, a, a magical mountain nymph. So, like, what? <laughs> Yes. What the fuck are you talking about? Ray's listening to this at breakfast. He just pushes his Wheaties away. <laughs> My God. <laughs> you saved me, Heath Enright. You saved me. So... I'm going to use your blurry image and not yeah, words in a right, movie someday so... to thank you. So, yeah. So now he was approached by two Sasquatches on his way out of the interview. Right. We have this extended video. Of him talking to Penn Jillette and a friend of Penn Jillette's who's also an actor, neither of whom he can show in his video. So it's just Ray talking to giant blurs. Yeah, but he gets it pretty good here because they literally ran into traffic to get away from him. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Again, his movie. That really happened. Yeah. Apparently, Penn told this story on his podcast later. He was like, yeah, this guy was so fucking obnoxious. I actually walked into traffic with my buddy. We almost got hit by a car. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And Ray puts it in. It's just like, and it's funny. It's probably because God had remembered that thing earlier about if you were going to get hit by a truck and I tackled you. And that's why you almost hit Penn Jillette with a car. I really wanted Penn to turn around at this point and be like, dude, what the fuck? Why didn't you tackle me? You're a liar. You're a liar. <laughs> oh, gosh. You know what? It just seemed like heavy. <laughs> the car. <laughs> and, and Penn, he's big dude. You're a libertarian. <laughs> <laughs> By a private not car force. And then, by the way, there's a, you, there's a mystery, obviously, at the heart of this whole movie. You may have not have realized that until now. But earlier when we were talking about Penn, we just knew that someone had given Penn a Bible, but we didn't know who. Well, Ooh. now we do, damn it. Ray found that guy. Or more than one person has ever given Penn a Bible. One or this guy's just making up shit to get to be in one of Ray Comfort's movies. One of those things happened. Well, never know. Uh, and he points out here, the guy who thinks he gave Penn the Bible, that like Penn and Teller stand in the lobby for like four hours after their show. And that's true. They do. They like shake everyone's hand who came to their giant show. Uh, fun fact, uh, which you should not miss. Penn loves doing that. Teller 
hates doing that because he doesn't get to talk to anybody. So if you stand there watching, you can watch Penn get happier and happier and tell her fill with white hot hatred of a thousand sons. <laughs> As 400 people make the same like, oh, don't say anything if you'll tell me all your tricks are done joke. He won't <laughs> break character even at the end of the show. He's always in character. Yeah, he's, I mean, his character is just not talking, but yeah. Uh yeah, I bet okay. he regrets that. Yeah. <laughs> Feels like they didn't think that one. Through, no. <laughs> All right. And now it's time to check in one last time with Jurgen, where basically he says, like, you know, the Ray turns to the camera and he's like, oh, you thought I was done talking to this 70 year old man about how inevitable his death was? I am not. I am not. I could go on. Well, guess what? He died. <laughs> yes. And. In traffic, just like Penn said, got hit by a truck. Huh? That's how how great an ending is that? Ray said in his movie, which he had control over. <laughs> so, <laughs> yep, he just thought, you know, that's a pretty, you know, God's pretty clever with his murders of old people. He, when, he, when God kills an old guy, I mean, he's usually pretty funny about it. And then Ray turns to us and in direct address explains how he wants to tackle us today with his banana. <laughs> yeah, and if Ray steps out in front of a car and dies at this point, best movie ever. <laughs> oh. That would be my favorite. That's... <laughs> I love Come the on. fact that the best way you could put like a silver lining on this movie is to say at the very end, so if you're being mocked for your faith, just be thankful you're not me. The end. <laughs> He's, he starts walking and he trips over Jurgen's dead body and falls into the street and gets run over by a truck. Oh, it'd be oh. even better if it was a banana peel, though. Banana peel. Oh. Awesome. <laughs> Just remember, if someone's making fun of you, someday, the as the Bible says, the, the fools will be wise and the wise will be fools. Bibliophile. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> All right, well, that's where the movie ends. I think the important takeaway, though, maybe not the one that Ray wanted us taking away, but the one I am taking away is that Ray will let atheists set conditions for interviews and debates. I know he's been dying to get on one of our shows. So to close things off today, I want to ask you guys and the audience at home, feel free to tweet us your suggestions. What conditions should we reach out to Ray with for when we do a debate with him? Oh, okay, uh... We tell him we're audiophiles and he has to dress accordingly. And just <laughs> <see what> <laughs> I'm a little teacup. Get out, Ray. <laughs> He's just dressed as an MP3. What does that even mean, man? <laughs> it's not fit. an MP4, if I you know fit. what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, my rule, if he's going to bring up like a uh, God's perfect creation... I get to do the rest of the debate without my shirt on while he makes that argument. <laughs> like, I'm going to just slowly hide things in my tummy fat as he describes how yeah, everything's no. too perfect. Obviously, that should be a rule just in general. Anytime Ray Comfort talks about how perfect God's creation is, he should have to do it naked, right? <laughs> All right, so that's going to do it for our review of The Fool, but that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to wrap something around the ads we scheduled for next week. So, Eli, tell us. What's on deck? Gosnell, The Trial of America's oh, Biggest Serial Killer. Gosh. That's the real title. Yeah, America's what? Biggest Serial Killer. He's an abortion doctor, though. Because he's an abortion yeah. doctor. Oh, wow. All right. Uh, yeah, so Ray Comfort was the, uh, was the soft landing for that. Just so. getting better. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's lovely Dean and wonderful. Kane. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 193 to a more merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review on iTunes and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist Citation Need and The Skeptic Guide, available on iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Our theme song is written and performed by Ryan Slot and Convivial Drafts on Mars. All the music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm New Illusions, promised to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. 
Every time he gets a phone call from Ray Comfort, Pendulette says, hold on, I'm going to put Teller on, and then he walks away from <laughs> Jurgen burned in hell for eternity like he deserved. Ray Comfort included us in a movie three years later, in 2032, at which point all of us were dead. Really? 2032, you think? Oh, absolutely. Jesus, I'm going to be under on Eli. <laughs> <laughs> you and me both, buddy. You and me both. <laughs> You're not allowed to bet on this. Six feet under. Are you kidding me? You don't think dentistry has changed in 50 years? I don't think dentistry so, is real. We're going to get so many fucking um, emails. <laughs> Jesus. Boy, I'll tell you what. Is- dentistry has changed in a ton in just my lifetime. Yeah, I Googled it and they, and there was actually a Quora question that was like, how come dentistry is so stupid and the same? And a dentist exactly answered this question with like, you fucking asshole. Yeah. Hey, Morgan, <laughs> send you know what me, fluoride is? Send me all of this so I can put it at the end and everybody knows at least that was notes. all Eli. Just in the show notes. Just in at least send notes, me this. Dentistry audio. is real. Yeah, right. <laughs> dentistry is legit. <laughs> Dentists changed a, a lot. Scheme. <laughs> yes, <laughs> dentists aren't real, and neither are pharmacists. These Teeth are my two. Are a figment of your imagination. All right. Interesting. Ad number two. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm LLC. Copyright twenty nineteen. All rights reserved.